In this video, I will talk about how to do principal component analysis and factor analysis in SAS. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos, including the lecture and the example for the same topic, principal component analysis and factor analysis. Click on the link below the video to go to the website and find the data, the programs and um, the handouts and all materials related to this topic. So I have opened up the SAS program here and I have already executed it and um, we will be using this data set called um, PCA underscore GSP and if I open up the data set this is what we have in here. The data is uh, for US states so we have 50 observations for the data set and we have 13 variables named agriculture, mining, construction, manufacturing, and so on. And the numbers here are shares of this um, uh, uh, in the gross state product for each of these sectors uh, in, in the state. And one thing that you can see here from the data is that there are different scale. So that's important is because we're going to be using correlations instead of covariance to see how the data are related. So the goal here is to look at these 13 variables and see if we can represent those variables with as few components or factors as possible. Okay, so the first line of code that we have here is we're importing the data. This is the data file and you need to change this for your program and for your um, for your paper and then um, we can define the x variables all the 13 variables that we have I'm just kind of listing them here on one line so in your own uh, when you use this program with your own data set all you have to do is change the name of the file that you're reading in and the variable names and the rest of the program should work for you without any changes so the first thing to do is calculate the means of the variables and so we're doing this proc means variable we're putting on the x list all the 13 variables and this is here the um, results from the means procedure these are the means and as you can see we have variable means and different ranges for these variables so that's why we need to use the correlation instead of the covariance uh, next thing we can do is with proc correlation we can calculate the correlation of these variables and here is the uh, correlation matrix again we see once across the diagonal and here we have correlations that are sometimes very low um, that there are some that are a bit higher uh, like here or here but in general there are not too many high correlations in here so we have a data set that's not very correlated actually that's not very good for principal component analysis uh, it, it will be better if your correlations are higher um, before starting to do that so here's how principal components is done uh, the analysis you use proc print component um, data you call the data set and you put your variables uh, in here and this is the results that we have actually these are the means and the standard deviations this is the correlation matrix so this is the first interesting result which is the eigenvalues of the correlation matrix and here because we have 13 variables we have 13 components and these are the eigenvalues. So the first component has this eigenvalue, the second one has this one, third one, and so on. Um, so one thing, um, the Kaiser rule says that if the eigenvalue is above one, you should retain that component. So using this logic, we're going to retain the first five and not the others. And this is the difference between the first eigenvalue and the second uh, the eigenvalue of the first component and the eigenvalue of the second component is almost 1. The difference here is 0.27 and so on. And here's the proportion of variation that is explained. So the first component explains about 25% of the variation, the second one 17. So cumulative, the first two explain 42. The first three, you add 15%, explain 57 and so on. 
And so you can see that with the five components, 76% of the variation in the data is explained with just five components instead of all 13 variables. And of course, if you go all the way up to 13 variables, all the variation in the data is explained. So from this, um, uh, from this uh, table here, you can conclude that you can use five components for simplicity, I'm, I'm going to use three just because um, there's like a little bit of a break between three and four here and just because to make the analysis simple. So I'm going to use three, but in your paper, you should probably use five. Yeah. And let the program decide how many components are you could use um, for your analysis if you're not sure how to do that yourself. Okay, so here are the eigenvectors now. And here are the, the 13 principal components. Uh, and let me first go over the scree plot. The scree plot are these eigenvalues that we talked about before. So the first was 3 point something, the second one was 2 point something, and so on. And you can see how the first five, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, have eigenvalues above 1. Um, so you need to use five components or if you look there is just a little bit of a break here so you can use the first three and this is the variance explained very nice graph for that so the first component explains 25 percent of the variation the second one uh, 17 and so on and this is the cumulative variance explained so if you use all 13 components you explain all the variation in the data of course so now back to the eigenvectors so the eigenvectors are actually the correlation between the components and the original variables. And here you have um, actually um, all, all, all 13 components. And here you can see some of the correlations are actually very low. And some of them are a bit higher. So here's how mining is very much correlated with the first uh, principal component transportation is also very correlated, um, energy is somewhat correlated, and, and, and so on. Uh, and if you keep the first three components, you can see which variables are correlated with which components here. Okay, so let's see. So this was the principal component analysis using all the, um, all the principal components. And this one here is if we restricted three components, you can use the same procedure as we used above, only that you put n equals three. And that's going to uh, actually restrict it only to the first three components. And here we have again the descriptive statistics, the correlation matrix. Here only the first three components are listed. And here are the eigenvectors. They're the same as what we have before. And again, if you're using this for your paper, you would be um, putting this um, uh, principal component loadings on in the paper. And you would try to interpret which ones are correlated with which uh, principal component. Now, you can plot this. Um, the principal comp components by using proc plot and then plotting the principal component two against the one and this is uh, this is what we get here this is actually the data that you're plotting on the principal component uh, on the principal component axis so you will see that these are actually 50 observations and these are how the actually states are plotted in the principal component space here. And you can see two outliers and we're going to look later on at these and you can see like the second one of them is the second observation that's an outlier. I'll show you this a little bit later on. Okay. So um, this is how to do principal component analysis and factor analysis uh, you can do using proc factor. You can read in the data. You can say method equals principal, priors equals one. Rotation, we're going to use no rotation for, the, for this first example. 
you can put the scree plot in here and you put the variable names in here and for me that's the x list so another option that you can use is method equals uh, equals this or price equals this so you could actually try if you're doing your own research with with different um, different methods for calculating these factors okay so again we can see here once we execute the procedure um, the um, eigenvalues in this matrix is exactly the same as what we had before and this is now the scree plot of the eigenvalues and you can see how there again um, that's the same one as before so you use all of them above one which means you use the first five or you just use the first three because these are kind of getting close to one okay so th this um, the program decided that based on the eigenvalues you would retain the first five factors and these are the loadings now on each of the factors and if you look above these loadings on the factor loadings are a little bit different than the principal component loadings that we had before because we're using different models and methods to estimate these. And um, one thing um, that you can do again is to um, look at the correlation between the variable and the factor. And so, for example, if you see on the first factor, mining is actually loading very high on that. Uh, which one? Uh, transportation and uh, real estate and services are also loading high with negative values. So in, in your own research you could try to name this factor based on the variables that you are loaded onto that. So for example we have here agriculture and manufacturing loading high on that one so maybe you want to give it a name based on these original variables that are loading onto that so another thing that you can interpret from factor analysis is this commonality or the uniqueness of uh, of each of the original variables and uh, you can see here that agriculture has very um, has high uh, communality factor which means it has a low uniqueness factor and vice versa and so these also could be included as part of the of the paper okay so the next thing that you can do here is actually you can estimate factor analysis with only three factors and you I just a little bit modified this one that I had above to this one so one thing I've changed is I put a uh, number of factors equal 3 um, fuzz equals 0.3 this actually leaves blanks in the table for any for uh, any of the numbers that uh, for which the correlations are less than 0.3 which makes it kind of easy to see which are the um, variables that correlate very strongly with the factors and you can also plot them and you can actually output these factors in the data back in the data set so this is what we see that's a repeat of the above and here here's the factor pattern we have three factors and now the factor loadings that are less than 0.3 are actually deleted so now you can see which um, which factors are loading, which variables are loading on which factors, and you can also try to name the factors based on which variables they're loading uh, loading on. Okay. So let's see. Here we also have the standardized uh, scoring coefficients. Uh, between the variables and the factors and these are actually used when you when you uh, calculate the factors that you you put back in the data set so if you look in the data set actually we have put the principal components and the factors back in the data data set so the principal components from the previous procedures that we did and these are the factor the three factors from now so now notice that each of the observations in the data set 
now has a factor associate it has a value on the factor and so instead of using the 13 original variables now you can use only uh, three principal components or three factors that explain as much as possible of the information that we have contained in these 13 variables and another thing notice that actually the second observation that we have here and that's the state of Alaska is loading very strongly on the first principal component and the first factor so we're going to see that as one of the outliers in the in the graphs um, that I showed you before for the principal component and now I will show you for the factor analysis okay so now this is how the original variables are uh, loading in the factor space. So here we have factor 1 and factor 2 is on, on this uh, horizontal axis. And one thing that you have is, um, is, a, is a legend here. So for example here this one is L and L has L is services. And so I'm looking at this L and the loading on factor 1 is approximately what minus 0.7 and the loading on factor 2 is approximately 0.5 or 0.6 so if you go back to the data for services for services you will see loading on the first factor is minus 0.6 and loading on the second factor is is 0.57 and this is actually what we see on the graph here. So um, you can see all of the original 13 variables in the factor space. That's kind of useful in to see how uh, the variables are correlated with the factors. So ideally what we want is for these original variables to be cl very close to the axes because then you have high loading on one factor and low loading on the other factor. That, that's the ideal outcome. Now if that doesn't happen, what we do usually is a rotation to make this happen. And there are several types of rotation and I will show you here the very max rotation. And so this procedure here is exactly the same in this one except that here the rotation I put that as very max whereas here we had the rotation as none and now you can see how these um, rotated factors are um, corresponding to the factors before that were not rotated and actually in this particular case the rotation didn't really change the results that much but typically what you will see is that there's very few variables here loading on the first factors on the second and the third and the other thing is that these factors are orthogonal to each other so um, this is the properties of the very max rotation and so if you look at the um, um, I actually didn't didn't do the plot now in the factor space just because it's the same but what we want to do is have something again here that the the original variables are staying very close to the axes that we have here okay so um, so the final thing that we can do here is to plot now the, in the factor space we can plot uh, the data or the observations and remember how I, I showed you the second element has very high loading on the first factor and this is basically those outliers that we have here and you can see how the observations or the states in this uh, in this case are loading on the factor one and factor two and uh, that's kind of useful to know and see and identify what's going on with the data. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, this was how to do principal component analysis and factor analysis in SAS.